and welcome to the DC Today. It is Fed Day, which is the best day. And you may think that today wasn't the best day because the market dropped in the final minutes of trading, but I will uh, make a case for something different. First, let's just talk about what the Fed did. Um, the, as expected, uh, raised rates a quarter point. As expected, they've more or less telegraphed it. I think that they're done. Uh, in fact, the futures market, as I got up from Bloomberg, was at 58% chance of the Fed not raising rates at the next meeting, 42% chance that they'd raise another quarter point. So it's not quite 50-50, but it's also not quite 100-0. So we, we'll, we'll see how those futures kind of process this in the days and weeks ahead. The next Fed meeting isn't uh, until the first week of May, so you have about five, six weeks to go here. Um, look, Chairman Powell said the incredibly profound and bold thing that uh, financial conditions are tightening. Um, so there you go. They are. And then he said that, that tightening and the restriction, the more restrictive lending conditions would factor into policy decisions. So there you go again. Um, I do think those are two ways of saying that we're done or we think we're done. Um, all of it really could be interpreted as we know we already should be done and have already gone too far, but we're kind of stuck here. It doesn't really matter. I don't, I don't think that uh, a critique of face saving or something like that is very helpful. I'm not looking to dunk on anyone. I mean, there's nothing like that. It's just simply that uh, the um, I don't believe in the objective they have of stating, well, we think we're going to counter inflationary pressures by uh, trying to slow down economic activity. But to the extent that one were to acknowledge, would say that is, in fact, the objective, whether I believe in its legitimacy or not, I will tell you that the chairman is exactly right. That the slowing down is being done for them, what you would call tightening through the policy rate is a little less necessary when you're getting tightening through the financial markets and, uh, you know, things like banks closing down and so forth. So you and also just a broader withdrawal of deposit funds, which removes reserves from the banking system and um, obviously an incredible pressure for banks to be very tight and restrictive in how they're going to lend right now. And and so I think that Chairman Powell's going to, um, his comments are going to prove to be a massive understatement. And, and uh, I do not expect that they'll raise rates again, um, but we shall see. Here's the interesting thing before I get to the stock market today. The uh, bond market dropped anywhere, the yield, so the bond market rallied, the yields dropped anywhere from 15 to 24 basis points at each point on the yield curve from one year to 10 years. And I think the 10 year was down about 15 basis points. It closed, you know, around three, four, three, four, five, big rally in the 10 year. In the middle of the curve, kind of the belly of the beast, you got like a 23, 24 basis point drop in yield at the three year and you were around 15 or so at the one year. So that yield curve action, um, it has not uninverted, but it has, it has uh, moved in the direction of an uninversion, of a flattening. And that, uh, you know, the I think uh, uh, market acknowledgement, financial market acknowledgement of the Fed being overly tight and not expecting that uh, party to continue on the short end of the curve. So here's the thing. The bond market today said, yeah, we, the Fed is is almost done. And then you, the stock market did at first, too, in the sense of markets were pretty flat and boring all day. It dropped a little here and there. And then they were up 250 points. And they, and they were up there basically like 45 minutes later. So it wasn't like they spiked in the first 30 seconds of the announcement, but then things kind of settled differently. For nearly an hour after uh, the Fed announcement had come out, the market was up 250. And about a half hour after, maybe 20 minutes after Chairman Powell's press conference, uh, the markets were still way up. And after that peak level of the day, 
uh, they did kind of spike up and down a little bit here. And then you got to the very final, and it wasn't even 15 minutes. It was like the final 13 minutes of the day. Market was down 500 points. And so I feel very confident in telling you that what happened was there were traders, very short-term people, that had positioned for the Fed to come out uber dovish today. And the Fed came out dovish. It's debatable if you'd call it uber dovish. But you got a bit of a rally. The bond market validated it. The stock market held it. And yet the traders were not taking it off. We're trying to see if there was going to be a next level of movement forward. And you had a little up-down movement. And then the final 15 minutes, it was clear the markets were not going to accelerate more. Keep in mind, they were already up 700 points in the last two days. And then I think you had the people that were in it to win it for that you know, uh, trade, the, the pal presser trade. And then all of a sudden you had a lot of selling pressure that took 500 points out in the last 15 minutes. So if there's a better theory as to what was moving things in such, uh, so violently in such a quick period of time, I'd love to hear it, but I don't think there is. And I think that the bond market provides a counterfactual. And I think the stock market's behavior in the first hour and 30 minutes after the announcement uh, validates my theory. So, I don't really care much about the short-term volatility today. Markets remain up on the week. We do not have much resolution on First Republic Bank, and I don't think we're going to get that right away. I do believe that there, that there are suitors that are looking to come in and play the role of a rescuer of a bank that has taken on some reputational things in the last week and a half, but that they want um, some FDIC help in the deal. And that can come without the FDIC backstopping losses directly. There's other ways they can provide regulatory relief and other capital requirements, which would be more the Fed than the FDIC. There's things that um, they could do to sweeten the pot. And, and I imagine there's haggling going on. In the meantime, the bond market has rallied dramatically. And uh, we will see tomorrow how markets respond the day after um, cause sometimes the day after the fed can be a brutal day as well, or it can be a rally day. Um, but usually lately, not much of a boring day. So that's my take on what has happened today, what the fed has done, where I think the fed will go. Um, whether people think it's a good thing or a bad thing, they did raise rates a quarter point today. I find it utterly preposterous. <clears throat> whether people think it's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't think they will raise again. And I think that, um, the reasons are that the financial conditions do not warrant it and the tightening is being provided uh, by the financial markets themselves. What a thought. Thanks for listening to, watching, and reading the DC Today. We'll see you tomorrow, Thursday, as the beat goes on. Hope you've had a happy Fed day. Mm-hmm.